are. Do we have some music? There we go. Hello, welcome to the last Sidetrack event. My name is Alexander Pope, and I'm really excited to be here today to share this story with all of you. It's a scary story, so I hope nobody has a weak stomach. And like the scariest of scary stories, it's all true, mostly. And I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try and actually say the title of the talk. This is Outbreak. Index-SW-9A, 4C43B4B4778, E7D1CA619, EAAF5AC1DB.js. <clears throat> If this wasn't attached to my head, I would just drop the mic and go, but I have a story to tell, and here we go. In the corner of a functional, though charmless, open office, Alexander sits at his desk, staring intently at the screen. A phone rings in the background, momentarily disrupting the early morning stillness. Hey, wow, you can import analytics data into Can I Use? And it looks like we already have over 50% service worker support. Alexander, it's still considered experimental. The specification has not yet stabilized. Nah, that's all they were talking about at Google I.O. Service worker is the best thing since Ajax. And it's already huge in India. Be not the first by whom the new are tried, nor yet the last to lay the old aside. The following morning, in a cramped meeting room, Alexander enthusiastically sketches on a wall-mounted whiteboard. This is great! It's basically a proxy server in your browser. You just call Navigator, Service Worker, Register, with a path to your script. It returns a promise, so that's cool. Alexander, I hope you are aware that the Service Worker lifecycle is non-trivial. There are many opportunities for error. No, 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 no. This is the web. If something is broken, you fix it and ship it. Continuous delivery for the win. At Google I.O., they recommended you just change something. The service worker will be invalidated and reinstalled. Eventually, anyway. Within 24 hours, at least. Fools rush and where angels fear to tread. <clears throat> Days later, Alexander hurries to clean up commits while rebasing a git merge in time for release. The desk is littered with disposable coffee cups. Embed unique asset names. Add feature flag. Use cache first strategy. Add cache expiry logic. Cache all API JSON data. Add app shell. Add online, offline status messages. Remotely log errors. Alexander, haven't you forgotten something? What about testing? Testing service worker is hard. So many globals. And an installation lifecycle. Things are working fine locally. And anyway, it's progressive enhancement. The most positive men are the most credulous. Several weeks pass. In the quiet of a darkened living room, Alexander anxiously scans air logs. Notification alerts pierce the silence. Type error? Undefined is not a function. Not a function? How could I at service worker global scope dot O not be a function? What the hell is going on? I don't get it. Things have been running smoothly for weeks. The only change here is some refactoring. How could cache at all be undefined? It works fine on my machine. Versions of Chrome prior to 46 did not ship with cache dot at all, among other differences. The specification is still unstable, as you are well aware. Shut up. You are not helping. I need to focus while I revert these changes. One week later, back at the office, Alexander puzzles over the latest error logs. That's weird. It's been almost a week since I reverted those changes, but there are still lots of errors. It shouldn't take that long to upgrade. 
It's just not possible. The logs say otherwise. There have been more than 2,000 errors reported in the last 24 hours alone. More weeks pass. Visibly tired and distraught, Alexander slumps over his computer at the dinner table. A baby cries in the background. This is starting to freak me out. I don't understand how there can still be so many errors. And it looks like, it looks like they're coming from inside the house. Alexander, don't be ridiculous. The errors are clearly not coming from inside the house. Is it me? Are they inside me? Am I infected with these errors? No, Alexander, you are not infected. It would appear that, for a small number of clients, index-sw-9A4C43B4B4778E71CA619EAF5AC1DB.js has been permanently installed. What? Permanently? It can never be upgraded? Like some kind of dead zombie Zom service worker? worker? That is correct. You fucked up. You fucked up big time. <clears throat> Whew. That gives me chills every time I think about it. Permanently installed. That is a horror story. You know, there's something strangely compelling about a disaster story. Sometimes it's the disaster is an act of God, other times it's man-made, but the best of them have this in common. The central characters are faced with difficult, sometimes impossible moral dilemmas. As viewers, we ask ourselves how we would behave in similar circumstances. Could we handle the pressure? Would we make the same choices, would we do the right thing? Some of my favorite disaster stories are about epidemics or disease outbreaks that threaten humanity. Think uh, Night of the Living Dead, 28 Days Later, 12 Monkeys, Children of Men, and many others. Many of these stories and the entire zombie genre, in fact, were inspired by the book I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. The book has been adapted three times for the big screen, and my favorite version is The Omega Man from 1971, starring Charlton Heston. I love it because it is just so 70s, and Charlton Heston just can't stop delivering cheesy one-liners, no matter what happens to him. He is part of the dead. He has no place here. He has the stink of oil and electrical circuitry about him. He is obsolete. You are discarded. You are the refuse of the past. You're full of crap. <laughs> the antagonists in this version are more human than the vampires and the zombies of the other adaptations. And I like this, I like that this cult of you know, albino mutants spends all of its time raging against the science and technology that they blame for their fate. In most zombie stories, of course, they don't plan on turning people into zombies. It just sort of happens by accident. And it's usually because technology goes a little bit out of control. Now, as I struggled against my own mob of zombie service workers, I realized that there is a real risk of triggering technological backlash. You know, as web developers, we're constantly tempted to throw more and more technology at the problem. But if we aren't careful, we might end up pissing off our users. You know, making things that are slow, annoying, inefficient, insecure, or even just full of bugs, it really risks alienating the people we're trying to make happy. Now, for the next 11 and a half minutes, things are going to get a little serious. Not like, oh my god, this is serious, kind of serious, but more like the grown-up kind of serious. There will be a lot of information that may or may not be relevant to you now, but don't worry if one day you realize you need it, you can always find it on GitHub. But before we first go too deep, just in case some of you are wondering what the hell a service worker actually is, here are the basics. A service worker is a script installed via a web page that runs in the background. 
It gives you the power to control asset caching, to handle requests from pages and workers when offline, and to respond to incoming push notifications. Service worker is a type of worker, so it doesn't have access to the DOM, AJAX, or local storage. But it does have post message for communicating with clients, fetch for accessing the network, and index DB for storage. Service Worker has a life cycle, which starts with registration when the file is downloaded and executed. It then enters the installation phase when the install event is triggered. And if there's already an older version installed and it's actively controlling clients, the Service Worker enters what's called the waiting phase until all clients have disconnected. When it's safe to begin controlling new clients, the activate event is triggered, and the service worker enters the activation phase. Finally, when the activation phase is over, the service worker is known as running and able to respond to client network requests via the fetch event handler. Now, service worker also has new toys, including a cache API for storing network requests and responses, a client's API for managing connected clients, which are pages and workers, and a push API for managing push notifications from remote servers. So with that out of the way, we can get down to business. How do we avoid the next zombie apocalypse? Or here are some things I wish I'd known before I started with Service Worker. Rule number one, in no particular order, understand how promises work but don't use them, use async await if you can instead. The service work API takes promise use to new extremes, so using async await can really help make things much more legible. Although very few browsers support it natively, it's just syntactic sugar over generators with promises, and every browser that supports service worker will also support async code converted to use generators. Using Babel with the async to generator plugin, that'll do the transformation for you. But be aware that this code cannot be minified with Uglified JS, which only supports ES5. So use Babli, which is another plugin for Babel that you can use for minification instead. Rule number two, don't register the service worker while the page is loading. Now bandwidth and CPU are limited, obviously, and they must be shared when the cache is being filled during the service worker's installation phase. So wait for the window on load event or some other signal before registering. Rule number three, know your dependencies. During the installation phase, passing a promise to event wait until will delay service worker activation until it's resolved. However, if it's rejected, the service worker will be thrown away and marked redundant. Now, since the installation phase is when you want to pre-cache all your assets, any asset that fails to load will cause a rejection. In this sense, you can think of pre-cached assets as hard dependencies, so you should beware. Rule number four, cache smarter. When upgrading a service worker, it's common practice to pre-cache assets in a new, uniquely named cache before deleting any old caches during the activation phase. Now, in most cases, this is a really good approach, but if you release very often, you can avoid wasting storage and bandwidth by only fetching new assets and then recycling the old ones. Now, you can first create more than one cache to separate versioned assets from those that won't change, and copy versioned assets from the old cache if they already exist. Now, obviously, this is not as neat as cache at all, but it is much more efficient. Rule number five, avoid forcing activation for major changes. Forcing activation after an update can break already connected clients if the new service worker is very different from the old version. So you can avoid calling self-skip waiting 
after a major change and consider actually prompting the user to trigger a manual refresh. And that way, there won't be any breakage. Rule number six, use a library for messaging. Sending messages between a service worker and its clients is actually kind of weird. Uh, the API is a bit hard to work with, but using a library like Swivel makes it a lot easier. Number seven, never rename the service worker file. <laughs> Once the service worker has been installed and activated, it will need to be updated, of course. But often, we, also, we cache the HTML file that triggers the registration. So it would be difficult to install a new service worker if it had a new name from that HTML file. So you can avoid this chicken and egg problem by making sure that the service worker script file name is never unique. It's always the same. And along with that, rule number eight, you have to set correct cache headers. Because of course, if the service worker script file names are static and the browser fetches the script through the browser cache before going to the network, you will need to correctly set cache control headers to prevent the browser from caching outdated versions. And as a precaution, sort of to avoid accidentally installing a service worker for days, weeks, or months, caches will be bypassed if their script is older than 24 hours, regardless of what you set. Now, cache and validation is always tricky, as we know. So in the future, browsers will be using cache busting always, by default, to ensure that the service worker script files are always up to date. Rule number nine, invalidate your service worker when updated. The service worker will be updated if it is byte different from previous versions. Now, a simple pattern you can use to treat the service worker as a bootloader by using import scripts and version dependencies, and that's all you have to have in your service worker file. Rule number 10, add a feature flag or kill switch. This one's important. In the event of disaster, having an easy way to disable existing service workers is a lifesaver, really. Add a feature flag to control unregistration. Keep a no-op service worker handy, just in case you have to have a quick deploy. Or, even better, have a service worker phone home to check its version, then force an update if it's outdated. Rule number 11, don't cache bad responses. You should always check the OK property of the response object returned from a fetch call before you add it to your cache because HTTP response codes, they don't cause the promise to reject. So you have to manually check. Rule 12, don't store global state. Now, storing global state in a service worker is really bad, bad idea. Because code outside of the event handlers, like install, activate, and fetch, they run each time the service worker is started. But the service worker is stopped and started many times over its lifetime as the yeah, the device manages battery and other resources. So it's really important not to store global state because it'll be destroyed at unexpected times. Rule number 13, guard against missing APIs. A number of API methods were added in later browser versions. So it's wise to test whether they exist before calling them. The following methods were added in later versions of Chrome, for example, after Service Worker was launched. Rule number 14, this is an important one too, test your Service Worker. Now because of the installation lifecycle and the sort of unique environment that they run in, Service Workers are really difficult to test. As always, running tests in real browsers with real code is going to give you the most realistic results. But unfortunately, there aren't yet any good tools to help with browser tests. But the methodology is well laid out in this article by Matt Gaunt of Google. Highly recommended. Now, automating browser tests comes with its own set of challenges, as some of you may know. So it's often better to test as much as possible with unit tests. Now, fortunately, there are some tools available to easily mock 
a test service worker. As part of their service worker's tool chain, Pinterest has developed helper methods and a mock you can use to make the Node.js global look more like a service worker. I've also released a project uh, called SWTestEnv, and it's a little more thorough mock of the service worker environment, and it allows you to run scripts in an isolated sort of sandbox context. With it, you can inspect the properties of the service worker's scope, manually trigger events, post message between clients and in service worker instances, use import scripts, fetch real or mocked data, use index DB storage, and requ require modules from inside your service worker file without a build script. Now here's an example from one of the unit tests I wrote for my slides, because I write tests for my slides. First, we load the service worker file. Then we create and populate an old version of the cache. Then we trigger the install phase. And finally, we read from the cache to verify that the old version has, in fact, been recycled. Now, I think it could be a really useful tool. So if you get the chance, take a look and let me know what you think. Finally, rule number 15. Use a service worker generator tool. If you don't want to get your hands dirty with all these details, you can use one of several service worker generator tools. There's lots of good ones out there. But you should still write tests. So now that we're educated, you might be wondering what happened. What was the recipe for this disaster? Simply, it was one part ignorance, one part stupidity, and one part mystery. Now, we know that versions of Chrome before 46 didn't support cache at all. So any client missing that API should have caused the promise return to the install event to reject with a syntax error. Undefined is not a function. Unfortunately, a catch was also added to the promise chain in order to report install errors. But the error was never thrown further up the chain. And the service worker was installed instead of thrown away. Now that explains how some clients became infected with a broken service worker. And based on the number of errors reported, it's clear that most of the infected were soon cured. But it's still a mystery to me as to why or how a small number became permanently cursed. Now, even after trying to install an empty service worker, then eventually a kill switch to unregister it completely, that broken file still haunts me and probably will until every one of those devices is retired. Now, even if the details are lost on you, I hope I've made my case for that service worker is a complex beast. It is awesome, but it's kind of awesome like the way a chainsaw is awesome. It's really powerful and really easy to lose a hand, a foot, maybe some toes. But don't be afraid. Because a lot of people use chainsaws every day without spilling blood. They take precautions, they dress for the job, and they read the instructions. Now, now that I know more, now that I have some tools for testing, I'm ready to get back into the lab. And I hope that everyone here is also ready. Because Service Worker really is the best thing since Ajax. And I know everyone remembers how that turned out. So thank you, and remember to kill your bugs and zombies, but not your dreams. Good boy, Alexander. Get off the stage. Thank you.